Wait a second. This is yesterday's outfit. Hold on just one second. And there we go. New digs. I like it. Hello, everybody. I'm John. This is Amateur News Today, May 6, 2021. And I'll just jump right into the headlines of the day. We have baby reveals gone terribly wrong. We have a kid who really loves popsicles and the death of all of our childhood fun and sometimes super germ spreader, the ball pit. Today, I want to start off talking about gender reveal parties, where if you don't know what that is, that's where parents or soon to be parents gather friends and family together and they they reveal the sex of their baby usually it's shooting off a confetti cannon maybe slicing a cake and showing the inside to be either blue or pink blue for boy pink for girl and sometimes it's become quite the spectacle and sometimes quite dangerous according to a newsweek article the most recent catastrophe happened by popping a balloon with a dart. What could possibly go wrong? Well, apparently, quite a bit. In the footage shared to TikTok by user Vifash, her sister's gender reveal ended with disaster when the dart became impaled on a party goer's leg. Imagine that. You're there to celebrate the future birth of a child and show everybody whether it's going to be a boy or a girl. Go, right in the leg. Mm. Ow! That doesn't sound good. And if you go and find this video, and I'll link the article down below, you'll see that the lady who took the dart to the leg took it like a chip. She was like, didn't even flinch. And just to let you know if you're squeamish, if you do decide to go look up this video, yeah, you see it in her leg. So uh, know that going ahead of time. Reading further into the article, you see that there's actually more disasters when it comes to baby reveal. Quote, the fact that this gender reveal did not work out as planned is inconsequential compared to the tragic accident that occurred in Mexico a few weeks ago. A gender reveal party stunt went horrifically wrong when two pilots died. An aircraft had been rented in order to perform tricks in front of party goers. Yet after the plane trailed a sign revealing the couples were going to have a daughter, it nosedived into the Caribbean, Caribbean, however you want to say it, sea, killing both pilots. Two lives were lost to say, hey everybody, we're having a girl. Doing a little bit more research into the gender reveals gone wrong, I came across an article on ABC News about an explosion in a New Hampshire quarry. Apparently on the week of April 25th, Residents of several New Hampshire towns were startled by a blast that rattled homes that could be heard for miles and miles. According to the source in the article, 80 pounds of tannerite, an over-the-counter highly explosive substance used for firearms practice, and in this case, was involved in a gender-revealed stunt at a quarry in Kingston. The man who was guilty of the blast did turn himself in, and when police investigated the site, they found blue powder, so if you're wondering, it's a boy! Also in the article, they talk about Tannerite, the company that sells a gender reveal target that contains just one pound of the explosives along with pink or blue powder. But this, this guy used 80 pounds of Tannerite. I can't even really imagine the size of that bomb. I mean, it's a baby reveal. It's not like we're back in Nam. I mean, my God, whatever happened to... Hey, yeah, hey, how you doing? I, I just want to let you know that um, I'm going to have a boy. Yeah, thanks for the congratulations. All right, take care. Bye. I mean, why do we have to blow things up and potentially kill people, which happened in another story that I'm just not going to go into, but my God, what happened to just letting people know, I have a boy, I have a girl on the way. I don't understand the reason for big boom. Ah, look at me, baby, baby, baby. How about just going, hey, a new life is coming to the world. We're having a boy, we're having a girl. Yes, it's a pretty big deal, but it's not worth setting a forest fire, which did happen with a baby reveal, killing people, which we talked about has happened with baby reveal. Just tell people. It's so easy. It's so simple. And there's there's no there's no issues. Just just tell people, okay? That's, that's all I'm trying to say. Just tell people what you're having and leave it at that. 
but maybe you feel a little differently about baby gender reveals. If you're into the spectacle of big blasts and just making it to a gigantic party, please let me know. And also let me know what you did for your gender reveal. Or if you are if you agree with me that maybe it's just easier to, to call people and tell them, hey, we're having a boy, we're having a girl. I really want to hear your thoughts. On things to expect after you have your little boy or little girl. Think about the next story, which comes to us from the New York Post. A four-year-old cartoon fanatic from Brooklyn went a little overboard by buying nearly $3,000 worth of non-refundable SpongeBob SquarePants popsicles from Amazon. However, a graduate school friend of the little boy's mom told the Post she set up a GoFundMe on Monday to help cover the... <laughs> The chilling cost. According to the crowdfunding page, the truly adorable SpongeBob diehard managed to purchase $2,618.85 worth of the Poppelgangers, Poppelgangers, well, that's a word, from Amazon and had them sent to his auntie's house. In case you were wondering, that's 51 cases containing 918 popsicles. Little inner child me is screaming with joy. Oh man, I love this kid. I'm just glad it's not my wallet he affects. And while the predicament may seem adorable on its face, however, Amazon will not refund the popsicles. The child's mom, Jennifer Bryant, was feeling the burn and thought she'd have to foot the bill herself. However, the GoFundMe page was set up and as of Wednesday morning, Kind-hearted donators had already contributed a whopping $5,475, eclipsing fundraising of the $2,618. The mom wants those who contributed to know that she is thankful for your mind-blowing generosity. And she says that the money that's extra will go to additional supports for her son, who is living with autism spectrum disorder. Our last story today comes to us from the Boston Globe, letting us know that the Petri dish of all favorite kid fun, the ball pit, is coming back on August 1st. According to the article, over the past year, as Governor Charlie Baker has issued and reissued guidelines for reopening Massachusetts, a subset of high-contact businesses have been relegated to the end of the line. Nightclubs, hot tubs, steam rooms, indoor water parks, and yes, ball pits are all slated to open on August 1st. Now, I gotta say, if you gave me a nightclub that had hot tubs, steam rooms, indoor water parks, and ball pits, I probably wouldn't go. However, I won't lie, 20s year old version of me absolutely would have been all about that nonsense. I, I mean, this just, ugh. Nightclub with hot tub, steam room, indoor water park, and a ball pit? That is 21 year old me's dreamland yeah so everything is going to open up for ball pits so your kid can jump in and maybe not get covid but you know what other whatever other diseases that kids like to carry around in ball pits like the flu hoof and mouth what have you maybe you get some rickets who knows but i'm not jumping in a ball pit my kid's not going into a ball pit so just to let you know if you're in massachusetts after august 1 ball pits are open nightclubs are open Steam rooms and water parks, so have yourself a blast in Massachusetts. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Anyways, that's it for this week on Amateur News Today. I'll see you next week, but until then, you all have a great day, a great weekend, and take care.